Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm back with more Band in the Box tutorials. This is part two. Now if you missed part one, I will put a link below. In part one, we looked at which version should you choose because there are many options available. I hope that you were able to choose the correct version for you. And if you did use my links on that video at the bottom in the description, they are affiliate links and they do help to support my channel at no cost to you. So thanks for using those. I have links to both Reverb and Sweetwater. Sweetwater is a great place to buy these from. When you do purchase it, if you get the download, you can install it right away. I hope you're able to do that. Do follow the instructions, of course, that come with it. If you went for the hard drive like I have and they send it to you in the mail, there's actually three ways to install. You can either install everything onto your computer and run it from there. That's nice and efficient if you have a large hard drive, a large and fast hard drive. You can also run everything from the drive to keep your computer clear and then you can move it to other machines. That's pretty cool. I like to do the middle option, which is to install the application onto my computer, but run the data from the drive. And I recommend that most people do that. So once you've installed everything and load it up, it's gonna look just like this. It may ask you to specify where your files are being stored. So if it doesn't do that, what you can do is go to Window and then Real Drum Settings, because there's Real Drums and Real Tracks. Real Drums, it says here, use a custom folder location. If you've done the basic install, applications, band the box drums is gonna be fine. If you're using the external drive, or moving things to other drives, you need to specify where it is or it won't find it. So just click on choose and choose that location. So mine is ban the box audio file, applications, ban the box drums. Okay, and then do the same, go to window, real tracks settings. It actually looks slightly different, which is kind of weird, but you see there there's a folder, click on that and specify the same thing. On mine it's volumes, ban the box audio file, applications, ban the box real tracks. Click OK. The next thing I highly suggest everyone does is go to Band in the Box, check for updates, and click on Refresh. Make sure you're loading the latest version. If there is an update, always install it because they often do bug fixes and, and improvements. Always install those updates. It says automatically check for updates every seven days. I have that enabled. That's clicked here to turn on, and that will check in case I forget to check myself. So once you've done all that, you're good to go. And this is what you see, a huge window so this is your chord chart, okay? If, you, if I go to the top, you'll see there's a C major here, bar one, two, three, four, five, etc. This is your chord chart where you're gonna type in chords. And all you gotta do is click on a bar and type the letter and you'll get that chord. So F, um, bar three, I want A minor, so A, M, and in bar four, I want G. Of course, we can use other types of chords as well, and we'll explore that in the future. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so you're notified when I post new videos or go live. So there's a simple chord structure for you that I entered because I know basic music theory. That was pretty easy. And that's gonna be my song for today. I wanna to keep this really simple so we don't get too complicated. So if I go here, it says one to 32 times three. That means bars one to 32 will play three times around. Now this song is only four bars, so I'm gonna click on 32 and change it to four. Press okay. Everything zooms in and now that's my song. This is a very simple song, very short song. I want it three times around, so one to four, three times. You see it says three X, that's the repeat marker for, for everyone that reads music. And you'll finish on a G. Well, I don't wanna finish on a G because I'm in C. I wanna finish on a C, so I'll click on the G and I'll press C. So there we go, a very, very quick song. Now, if you don't know music theory, how would you do this? Well, of course, I encourage everyone to learn basic music theory, but Band the Box have included a tool to help you out. If you control click on a bar, it says Chord Builder, and you get this screen. Now, this screen is so useful. You can say, right, I'm in C, so my root chord is C, my root note is C, and it plays a C on the piano for you. It's a C major, this chord. Okay, well, what chords can I use in C major? If you look down the bottom, it has your common chords. The first one is diatonic. Now, 99% of pop music is written using diatonic chords, and they're right here. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B minor, seven, flat, five, and you can audition them simply by clicking on them. So they all work, right? The B minor, seven, flat, five can sound a bit too jazzy and isn't used that often. But the other six chords, you can make 
you know, hundreds of songs from these. So you could say, right, the first chord is C, and then it says bar and beat, so I'll scroll along to where it says bar two, beat one. Okay, let me try, um, I don't know, a G? Okay, I like that, so enter chord. Puts it right there. Go along two more to the next bar. This is bar three, beat one. Um, let's try a, uh, oh, let's try the A minor. Sounds good, let's enter that. Okay, and I'll go along to the next bar and let's try an F. Okay, well, I mean, all these are gonna work, so I'll enter that. Now I wanna hear what it sounds like. So I'm gonna play this. This is four, four, C major, 75 beats per minute. And there's two play buttons here on your transport controls. The first play button is just gonna play whatever is there right now. It might play what I had written before because it hasn't updated everything. I tend to press the play button with the plus. This will regenerate the whole song and play the whole thing all the way through. This is the safest way to do it. It takes a few more seconds depending on the speed of your computer, but you're always gonna get the latest version of what you're working on. So I always press that one. Let's take a listen to this. So you hear a click there, you can actually turn that off in band the box preferences, but I'll leave it on for now. Okay, that sounds nice. Sounds great, sounds like a pop song. Awesome, one more time and it will finish on the C at the end. Which is what I wanted to do, which is awesome. F, and should finish on the C. press stop. So straight away that sounds great. I mean I'm pretty happy with that as it is. Let's say the key is too low for your voice or your, the instrument you're playing, you want to try a different key. Click on the C, so we are in C of course. It says here just change the key signature in case it's incorrect. It also says on the left transpose and set key signature. So on that transpose side if you click on G it will now change it to G for you. Or you might want E and instantly it changes it changes it to E. The great thing is though, what you just heard there was real audio, and you're gonna hear the real audio um, transposed, and you can even change the speed. Let's say that's slightly too slow. Let's put it up to 80 beats per minute. It's gonna change the tempo and the key of the audio. This isn't MIDI, this is real recording. So let's check that out. Again, we must regenerate the track. Let's see how that sounds. I mean, it sounds great. It still sounds totally real. Now, that's our main screen. That's the screen we put our chords into. The next important screen is your style picker. Now, that style actually sounds really good, but say we're working on a different style of music, you want to come here and click on where it says DRM, Dreamy 16th Country, on that one. Click right there. I usually go to Browse Styles with Info. So I'll click on there, and it gives me my style picker. This is the style picker. Now, of course, the reason I love Band the Box is there's thousands, hundreds, so many styles. You can sit here all day auditioning styles. That is not very useful when you're looking for something specific. So what they've done is they've actually added some filters and these are really useful. Check this out. Under type, you can choose whether it's real, no MIDI, real with MIDI, MIDI only. I want real with no MIDI. I want real. So although I can use any style because it will change the tempo for me, it's nice to stick within what you're looking for. And also you're going to get more ballads when you search for 85, right? So time signature, I'm in 4-4, I'll choose 4-4. And category, I'm working on a ballad. So let's do ballad here. There's many styles there. Now you still have a ton of options. Look at this. You still got all of these, but it's narrowed it down for me with the filters. So very useful. You can also type in here a familiar song title and it will set the filters for you. So if you want it to sound like Wonderful Tonight, type Wonderful Tonight. It'll look for styles that sound like Wonderful Tonight. Very, very, very useful. Now let me try one then. That sounded great as it was, but let me try the Bush Pop Ballad Swells. Now down the bottom it says play or there's a play icon in green. These are very different. The green one is quick. That will play random chords for you that are not in your song, just so you can hear the arrangement of the tracks. But when you press the word play, it will use your chords. Now I think this is more useful because you're hearing the backing track in context of your song. 
So I'm gonna do that. It takes a few more seconds to generate, but I think it's worth it. Okay, I like it, but that guitar is a bit too dramatic for me, but we can either look for another backing or we can just adjust that. I'm gonna try adjusting that today. So I'll click OK, instruments for this song. Um, the MIDI ones can be useful, we'll explore them in the future, but I want real tracks today. Tempo, well I know this is a ballad that's around, let's say, I'm gonna be around 85. So although I can use any style because it will change the tempo for me, it's nice to stick within what you're looking for. And also you're gonna get more ballads when you search for 85, right? So time signature, I'm in 4-4, I'll choose 4-4. And category, I'm working on a ballad. So let's do ballad here. There's many styles there. Now you still have a ton of options. Look at this, you still got all of these but it's narrowed it down for me with the filters. So very useful. You can also type in here a familiar song title and it will set the filters for you. So if you want it to sound like Wonderful Tonight, type Wonderful Tonight. It'll look for styles that sound like Wonderful Tonight. Very, very, very useful. Now let me try one then. That sounded great as it was, but let me try the Bush Pop Ballad Swells. Now down the bottom it says play or there's a play icon in green. These are very different. The green one is quick, that will play random chords for you that are not in your song just so you can hear the arrangement of the tracks. But when you press the word play, it will use your chords. Now I think this is more useful because you're hearing the backing track in context of your song. So I'm gonna do that. It takes a few more seconds to generate, but I think it's worth it. Okay, I like it, but that guitar is a bit too dramatic for me, but we can either look for another backing or we can just adjust that. I'm gonna try adjusting that today. So I'll click OK. This will allow me to show you the third most important window in my opinion, which is the mixer. So if I click on where it says mixer on the top right here, you get a floating mixer and it shows you all the tracks in the song here. It shows you the, vo the volumes of the song and this song and all songs, and it shows you options here which include mute, solo, freeze, volume, pan, reverb, and tone. So you can adjust the tone of the instrument from brighter or duller. You can adjust the pan, the reverb. So let me see if I can improve this back in using the mixer. I'm gonna regenerate the tracks right now. First of all, I'll find that kind of loud guitar sound by soloing just to make sure I get the right track. I'm not sure if that's the guitar or the pedal steel. Let me see. It's that guitar. Now I have options here. I could mute it. Now it's gone. It changes the whole feel of the track, doesn't it? And now I can play the guitar over it. But maybe I want it. But I want to lower the volume. I'll just bring the volume down like this. Maybe add some more reverb to make it more distant. And it's also quite bright, so I'll bring the tone down. There we go. So that mixer is very powerful. I completely change the whole feel of the track. And also, of course, if I'm gonna play guitar myself, I don't want the guitar, so I can just remove it. So that's amazing, I love this. Now, you can in the future import these tracks into your recording software, your DAW, and do it from there. But this is so powerful just to, on the fly, arrange the song. The fact you have mute, solo, volume, pan, reverb, and tone, that's pretty much all you need to do a rough mix. It's really, really great. So today we covered how to input your first simple song into Band in the Box. We've looked at our chord charts and, and how we can type chords in and how we can know what chords are available to us within the key we're playing in. We've looked at the style picker, which allows us to filter and choose the correct style for our song and the mixer to tweak the mix and improve it there. Now, of course, in the future we wanna add holds, pushes, more than one chord per bar, all these things, and we'll look at that in the future. So again, please subscribe, ring the bell, and put in the comments below what you think of the software and what you'd like me to cover in the future. Maybe in the future I can even do one of my own songs from start to finish to show you how I'd approach that. But right now, I just think it sounds so good and is so accessible to everyone 
that you should just get the software, type in some chords and just make some music. And when you're done, you can go to file, save special and save this as an audio file and email it to your friends. They could jam over it. You can make songs over the internet. There's so many options. Even if you don't play or sing an instrument, you could just make tracks and just save them to your phone as audio files and play them in the background. This is amazing. So I hope you enjoyed today. Every time I use this software, it impresses me. I just love it. If you're gonna buy it, please consider using my links below. I really appreciate it. Check out part one, uh, watch this video again and get familiar with the basics. And in part three, we'll explore some more advanced features. So please feel free to send me your suggestions for that as well. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and well, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.